thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you so much, Director Ray, for being with us yet again. As you know, we've seen a disturbing rise in domestic terrorism and far-right extremism across the United States, and we've heard from you several times about this. White supremacist and far-right extremist groups um, continue to outpace all types of terrorism and do domestic violent extremism, according to the National Institute of Justice report from this past January. Part of this dramatic rise in extremist violence and threats stems from malign foreign actors who are actively working to sow division in American democracy. They're desperately trying to inflame extremists at, with, and deepen divides, all to support far-right agendas and candidates that will erode our democracy. The DHS threat assessment has warned, we expect the 2024 election cycle will be a key event for possible violence and foreign influence targeting our election infrastructure, processes, and personnel. Microsoft has warned that the 2024 election may be the first presidential election during which multiple authoritarian actors simultaneously attempt to interfere with and influence election outcomes. National security officials and experts have warned that foreign governments, mainly Russia, China, and Iran, seek to destabilize the United States via its elections by sowing further division in the American electorate. This is happening and happening in the current context of increased political violence in our country against a former president, election workers, judges, members of Congress and their families, and other public servants. I cannot emphasize enough that this is a national security threat. Director Ray, reports have found that these propaganda campaigns will sometimes target, target racial groups. Why would countries like Russia, China, Iran seek to inflame racial tensions via social media? Well, of course, it may vary from adversary to adversary, but the playbook for authoritarian regimes uh, in today's world is to try to sow divisiveness and discord, to turn us against each other, to capitalize on existing social tensions that they perceive, and to try to, uh, in effect, pour gasoline on the fire uh, and intensify those conflicts that may already exist uh, in our domestic you know, political scene. Uh, so rather than uh, you know, if you're a foreign adversary, that means us no good. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than try to come up with some completely brand new issue or, or theory or narrative to turn us against each other, you look for things where we're already, at the very least, quarreling with each other, if not fighting with each other, and then they try to capitalize on that and amp it up. And of course, that can then sometimes, as we've seen all too tragically, boil over or bubble over into outright violence. And so um, how has the FBI worked to combat this propaganda and infiltration on our social media networks? So our focus is on the foreign actor, China, Russia, Iran, uh, and on their efforts. And so we work with the intelligence community, we work with our foreign partners, our friendly foreign partners, to try to uncover what those countries, Russia, China, Iran, are up to. Uh, and we try to share information about the hidden hand of the foreign actor uh, where it's appropriate. Uh, we also engage in efforts to disrupt those foreign actors. Uh, the most recent example uh, with the Russians, for example, is a uh, Russian government-linked generative AI social media um, bot farm where they were posing as among others, U.S. persons and not, in fact, U.S. persons, and trying to, again, sow various narratives. In that case, very heavily focused on uh, at the issue they picked there was, you know, the war in Ukraine, and again, trying to kind of get everybody uh, turned against each other. We've also seen that, though, from China and Iran. I mentioned China before. Uh, we've had a case where they 
we charged, I think it was 34 Chinese Ministry of Public Security, MPS officers, for much the same kind of behavior, creating false personas, pretending to be Americans, and then trying to kind of sow narratives. In that case, in the Chinese case, their narratives were trying to, for example, undermine any suggestion that COVID was the product of a lab leak or attacking U.S. law enforcement uh, at the anniversary of George Floyd's death, for example. And then Iran, uh, in 2020, we saw them undertake similar kinds of efforts um, that were uh, disrupted in the, in the, I think, October of 2020. Thank you, and I yield back. General Lee yields back. 